We have learned what is VoIP monitor, its architecture and how we can install it in Debian Linux. Now it's time to learn how to install VoIP monitor sensor or a sniffer. Before we jump into the installation steps, I want to recap different installation modes that we can use for VoIP monitor a sniffer in our telephony network. In the first method, the sensor will be installed on our telephony system or PBX. Uh, this is the simplest method, of course it has its own downside as you can imagine. First of all, it will use the same hardware resources as your PBX box. For example, if you have a free switch or asterisk or open source or Camellio, you can install the sensor on the same Linux box as your uh, telephone system or SIP router. But the problem is that it will use the same hardware resources such as RAM, CPU, and network, and it may cause some problems in high loads. Of course, uh, you cannot install the VoIP monitor sensor on non-Linux operating systems as well. So for example, if you have a um, 3C system that for example is running on the uh, Windows or for example if you have uh, any other PBXs such as for example CUCM or Avaya that you are not allowed to install the, uh, any package on the same PBX box or on the same server, then it's not the solution and uh, you cannot use the first method. In the second method, we can install the VoIP monitor sensor on a dedicated uh, physical box or a virtual machine and then we connect our payback system to this dedicated box. Of course, your payback system uh, should have an extra network interface that you can connect to our VoIP sensor machine. In this method, as we are using dedicated uh, resources for our VoIP sniffer, it won't affect our PBX functionalities even in high load but of course it has its downside because your PBX system should have an additional network interface that can connect to our sniffer box. In the third method that is the preferred method in most of the cases we will install the VoIP monitor sensor on a dedicated box and then we will connect it to a managed switch. The managed switches such as Cisco, Juniper or any other brand usually they have a feature that we can enable a promiscuous mode or a sniffer mode on the ports so that all traffics that are sending to our payback system uh, will be copied to the port that our VoIP monitor sensor is connected to as well. In the third method, the VoIP monitor sensor can capture all traffic without having any effect on the performance of our telephony system or SIP router. Today I'm using the method 1 to install VoIP monitor sensor on my Debian Linux. I'm using FreeSwitch as my PBX box that is installed on the same Debian host. We will learn how to install VoIP monitor sensor, how to configure systemd to auto start the sensor after system restart, how to configure database for remote sensor access and finally how to set necessary configuration for the VoIP monitor sensor. So let's start by installing the VoIP monitor sensor. I have documented all the steps in my GitHub that I will uh, put the link in the description of the video. So in order to a start in installing, we need to start by VoIP monitor sensor in installation. Uh, we need to install a tool, RRD tool, this is used for by VoIP monitor for graphing mostly. And then we will create a folder, we will download the file and we will uh, extract it and we will use the install script sh to uh, actually install the VoIP monitor sensor. Let's just first install the uh, RRD tool. Great, and then you can just copy paste the whole commands. It will download the VoIP monitor sensor, it will extract it, and then it will run the install script sh, a shell script that will install everything for you. It will ask what is the var, what is your spool directory, just accept the default. If you have any other network interface name, just change it here. Mine is ETH0, so I will just stick to that and then uh, the pool size that we can use default. 
and then let's go to the service management in order to actually configure the VoIP monitor a service to auto start after every restart we need to install the systemd configurations uh, we need to create a file and then add the configuration of the VoIP monitor service now we can use systemctl command to start VoIP monitor and also to enable we will enable so that every time we are rebooting the system the VoIP monitor service starts automatically and also we can check the status systemctl status VoIP monitor and it is active and running Okay, great. The next step is to um, change the settings of our database of VoIP monitor server. Because the a sniffing data will be saved in our central VoIP monitor database. So we need to give our um, database uh, an access and also it should listen on all interfaces because by default it's listening just on the loopback interface. Let's go and change. This is my VoIP monitor uh, server. First, we need to edit the MariaDB configuration files and change the bind IP address. As you can see here, the bind IP address is on listening on the loopback interface. I want to listen on my... Uh, actually, I can set my public IP address or I can set easily to 000.0 so that it listens on all network interface. Then I can uh, use systemctl restart mariadb command and I can check if it is listening in all network interfaces by using the command netsat-na pipe grep uh, 3306 this is the default port of the database as you can see now it's listening on uh, loopback and also it's listening on the uh, all, network interface, all network interfaces that include our public IP address. Of course, uh, if the VoIP monitor uh, sensor wants to connect to our database, it should have a credential. In order to create that credential, we need to connect to our MySQL uh, console. Uh, let me just bring it up. And then we need to create a user. I created the user free switch here with the password of my pass. Uh, you should know you, you should not use this password. And then I will give access to my sensor. This is the IP address of my VoIP monitor sensor, uh, privileged to all the databases. So because I don't have any other database here, so that's safe. And I will exit my uh, database here. In order to test if this connection works or not, because you may have firewall, if you have firewall, you need to open your firewall port of uh, 3306 here as it is a test environment I'm not using any firewall so it should be already open in order to test it we can install MariaDB client on our VoIP sensor machine here is my free switch so I will install it and then I will use this command mysql-u my username dash h the IP address of my VoIP monitor dash p that will ask for the password to check if i can connect remotely to my system or not i will enter my password my pass here and yes i'm able to connect and for example if i run show databases i can see i'm i'm able to see voip monitor and database that is in my voip monitor server the last step is the voip monitor sensor configuration uh, it has a lot of configuration files you need to refer to the uh, it has a lot of configuration options but all of them are in one file that is etc uh, voipmonitor.conf it has a lot of options you can refer to the website but I will tell you the minimals that we need uh, it's very useful to change the sensor ID because the, the sensor ID one is used already by the VoIP monitor server itself so let's name it 2 uh, then we can change this number actually and we can assign a name to this sensor ID as well 
and also the critical option here is my SQL host uh, so here my SQL host we need to tell it to save the information in our VoIP monitor database the one that we just created the user on it so I will just create here the ports and also of course the username and password we don't connect your root we are using fs as username and my pass as password and finally we need to systemctl restart uh, voip monitor and our voip monitor sensor is ready um, i just want to mention one last option that you may uh, need to use it is the c port in the same configuration files if you are using any other port uh, then uh, 5060 for example here I'm using 5060 and 5070 so I added both in my configuration files that's it on the VoIP sensor configuration now if we log into our VoIP monitor we, we, should, we should be able to see this VoIP sensor and we add it to our GUI let's see how it works So in order to, uh, I will just copy the IP address of uh, my VoIP monitor and I will use this one to connect to my VoIP monitor. As you can see the sensor is already detected and I can just confirm it. After the confirmation the sensor is already added to your VoIP monitor and uh, you can use the sensor. Uh, if, you, if you make some calls you will see all the information that you have. Of course here is not for this sensor because it's running on another box that of course a lot of hackers wants to hack that but there is nothing there to be hacked but uh, that's the method that we use to install the VoIP monitor sensor and adding it to the VoIP monitor GI. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or any suggestions for the, late, for the later videos, please put in the comments uh, in my YouTube channel. Thank you and have a very nice day.